Frozen vs. Tangled was a huge success with well over 1 million views and counting. To celebrate, I'm doing it again. This time though, it's going up against the head honcho. What many consider to be the best animated flick ever made. Lion King. Frozen vs. Lion King on another movie feuds. Yes, this is a cash grab. Gonna be bringing back the pun counter. So get ready for some perfect Frozen and Lion King quips. That's already one. Both our movies today contain a good amount of royalty. Frozen has our two leads, Princess Anna and Queen Elsa, carrying the bulk of the film on their shoulders. Voicing these roles are the lovely Kristen Bell and Broadway master, I don't know how to say her name. Anna is the more approachable sister with her bubbly and clumsy personality, while Elsa has a more standoffish character, more uh, frosty in nature, one could say. The Lion King gives us a prince by the name of Simba, and he just can't wait to be king. 90s heartthrob JTT, short for Jonathan Taylor Thomas, brings this character to life. He's a rambunctious little cub who tends to get into trouble from time to time. He has a lot to live up to. I mean, he's been raised in a culture that is watching his every move. He's essentially a less douchey version of Justin Bieber. Started out great, kind of falls apart in the middle. We'll see where the end takes us. We fortunately do get to see him mature over time and he grows into a fine young man. Simba, not Bieber. Bieber's still terrible. Lioness Nala plays a supporting role in Lion King. She's not afraid to get into a little trouble either, and she can also hold her own in a fight. Kitty can scratch. Supporting roles come in all shapes and sizes in these films, ranging from the comedic stylings of Timon and Pumbaa to a happy-go-lucky snowman that's not afraid of a little heat. Frozen has a second helping of comedic relief from Sven and Kristoff, but Zazu and Rafiki, they're hard to top. That and there's a trio of hyenas, one of which is Whoopi Goldberg, and they get in some great one-liners as well. I'd say so far the characters are pretty equal, but now we have villains, and that's where these two separate. Scar is one of the best villains in the Disney universe, and that's thanks to the diabolical nature and great performance by Jeremy Irons. He's also one of the most successful villains too, let's, let's put that out there. As he maintained rank as the King of Pride Rock for many years with his hyena crew. Now calm down, Froze Hards, Hans wasn't a bad villain by any stretch, he just didn't get a lot of screen time. I admit the twist at the end was pretty cool, albeit expected, but it felt a little forced all the same. End of the day, as the business types say, Frozen has a great assortment of characters, but it's hard to top the king of the jungle. These two movies are far more similar than one might think. It's too, too symbol. Both tales are that of a king and the queen on the run, hiding from their responsibilities. I said tails, like a lion's tail. Put that in the counter, please. Simba needs to come back to Pride Rock after a decade of being gone in order to bring balance to the land. Elsa's a hot mess. She's got her own inner demons, and frankly, she needs to let it go. To overuse a, a joke that everybody else has done. A lot of these problems probably could have been avoided had Disney not killed the parents in both films. Simba watches as his father Mufasa is crushed to death by a stampede in the gorge at the Paws of Scar. Raw deal for James Earl Jones there. The worst part is, good old Uncle Scar makes Simba think it was his fault. Just a dick. Granted, he still has his mother, but at that point he feels so much shame, he can't even bear to look at her. He can't even lie in to look at her. Does that one work? No. Frozen says F it. We're killing both sets of parents in a boat wreck, off at sea, off camera. We'll let the kids figure it out. Naturally, the girls become shut-ins from the world, living their life in solitude. Actually, come to think about it, why does Anna need to be stuck away in the castle? She doesn't have any powers she's trying to hide. I don't know why I'm even thinking about this. The script for Frozen is so nonsensical, even a Pitbull song sounds genius in comparison. I mean, I'm all about stretching the imagination, but there's a few lingering questions that bother me. I understand that Elsa can make snow and ice and she's magic. She's basically a female Sub-Zero. What I don't get is how can she make a fabric dress? It's not made of snow or, or ice, it's, it's pure silk. For that matter, she can actually create life. She makes a snowman and a giant abominable creature. <sighs> That's a pretty big deal. We're just gonna gloss over that? Questions aside, I enjoyed Frozen quite a lot, but the story could have used a bit more Johnny depth. Lion King keeps things simple and focused. Simba thinks he murdered his dad, 
runs away from home, meets a ragtag group of buddies who teach him Hakuna Matata, and they get this guy to YOLO it up a bit. Years later, the past comes right back to haunt him. It's a roaring good time, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. These are both stunning films. Lion King gives us top of the line traditional hand animation, showcasing beautiful sunsets, grand shots of valleys and canyons, and a great amount of detail on the animals. Frozen's the newer film, of course, so the paint's a bit shinier. It's got that bright, colorful, all-around pleasing look, but it's the unique camera angles that really help it out, like the underwater shot looking up at the ice pickers as they're chiseling away and then never seen or mentioned again. Lion King gives us plenty of action with the hyena chase early on and an instantly classic stampede sequence. The final showdown is both fun and gripping as our lovable side characters step up to help fend off ravenous hyenas. Would have liked to see a bit more action in Frozen, particularly from Elsa. Her powers are very cool. That was actually an unintentional pun, but let's count it anyways. There's a Beauty and the Beast-esque chase from wolves, a snow creature confrontation, and a race to save Anna from her cold fate. I'm pushing Lion King again here. I fear it's all for nothing though, as Frozen is still the new hotness with the kids. I have been surprised before by the votes, so who knows? There's really no way of knowing right now. Music can make or break a Disney movie, and in the case of Frozen, it makes it. Do You Want to Build a Snowman is a really clever song. It's also depressing as hell, considering it revolves around the broken relationship between two sisters. Topped off with an intermission where we get to see their parents sink in a boat. <laughs> Why are you so sad, Disney? You're always killing things. Shouldn't even have to bring up Let It Go. Everybody knows it, everybody loves it. In fact, I almost didn't talk about it just to piss kids off. But here we are. I know everybody on the internet is sick of Let It Go by now, but we have to give it its props. It needs its due respect. The song is catchier than a fish out of water. That, that joke makes sense? For the first time in forever, Love is an Open Door and Fixer Upper are all definitely worth mentioning as well. Now, if you thought that Frozen had the lion's share of songs, <laughs> you're sorely mistaken. It's actually ice to see Disney putting this much effort into their music again, but man does Lion King have some doozies. First off, the film kicks in with the circle of life, setting the tone for the world we are about to enter. We get treated to numbers like, oh, I just can't wait to be king. Can you feel the love tonight? Hakuna Matata. A nice rendition of In the Jungle and my personal favorite, Be Prepared. All in all, the music is magnificent, and people will be singing these songs to the end of time which is in 2016, I believe, is when we're going to die. Subscribe. Oh, I, just can't I think it's pretty obvious where I stand. I'm in the Lion King camp, right next to old Simba himself, seated at the right hand of the throne. Doesn't mean it's gonna win, though. <laughs> Quite the contrary, actually. You guys have the final say, and make your voices heard. To vote, just simply like one of the comments below that I'll post. We can also try something crazy and new, something a little wild. Why don't you tweet about it? Hashtag Frozen or hashtag Lion King at Movie Feuds. Let me know who you thought. Tell me about it via, via tweet. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with this. If you're a fan of movies, if you're a fan of films, debate, discussion, and you like the episode, why don't you like this video and subscribe. I do a lot of them, one a week as a matter of fact. Also, if you like Harry Potter, I don't really know who doesn't, stick around because in August it's Potter Month. An entire month of Harry Potter feuds, one a week, all the different movies in the franchise. There you have it. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Hey John Flickinger, want to build a snowman? No? Come on my show next week then, we'll feud.